In 2019, I had a student called Abhishek rank 11 in RBI 2019. He was a student of RAMC, and when I got to talking to him, I realized that his focus on strategy and planning made sure that he got through the examination in a breeze. This year, I have another student, Meenal Pathania. She belongs to army background, and after talking to her, I have realized again that her focus on strategy and planning has made sure that she got into RBI in a breeze again in only her first attempt. So my first question to her is, what was the approach that you followed when you started your preparation for RBI? Sir, so, uh, my first step was getting all the syllabus right, you know, seeing what all needs to be done and what all uh, I should, uh, like, I should focus on my strengths in the entire area. So once I jotted down the entire syllabus, I put it in an Excel and I made sure that I do little bits of the entire syllabus every day. And I focused a lot on uh, uh, revision instead of note taking. So there were a lot of apps that I used to do that. I, I, I integrated Evernote and flashcards into my daily routine. Mm. And based on that routine, I think uh, that that was the most beneficial part of uh, uh, technology that I utilized in my so uh, we're talking about technology, we're talking about Excel, we're talking about note taking yes. to Evernote and blah, blah, blah. So let's take it step by step because technology is something that a lot of students talk about, but even then we stay confused about how to do it, right? Yes, so let's say today you have to start your preparation. What is the first step that you're going to take? So first step is uh, first uh, getting to know what is what all is to be done. Mm -hmm. Then you break it down into this is all that I need to do. What are the sources that I should use? Mm -hmm. And you should spend a lot of time on that. Like mm -hmm. take your time in planning. Mm -hmm. So I narrowed down what I needed to do for phase one, phase two, and simultaneously while doing phase two prep for my interview. Mm -hmm. And I narrowed down my sources. Once I was comfortable with them, I took my time to do my planning. So once I was comfortable with them, I made sure that I stick to it. I do not change them midway. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I just took an Excel. I made a plan that I cover all these sources that I have in my mind. Mm -hmm. So I based made my daily routine eight hours of a day mm -hmm. based on that. Whatever needed more thinking and cognitive skills, I did in the morning because that's the time I was more productive. Mm -hmm. And for rote learning and all, I kept the night time or something. I would revise flashcards while walking and all. Mm -hmm. So I just made that routine and I stuck to it. And I would make a note on my Excel that this is my first division, this is my second division, mm -hmm. and that would keep me motivated. That all right, I'm getting something done. So, like, I would also sit at the end of the week and see, this is all I've done, it's not going right, what's going wrong. Mm. And I would tweak my strategy, not entirely change it. Mm. So, these are the steps I followed. So, so Excel, uh, revision. Excel, revision. And on, online note-taking. Online note-taking on Evernote. And I used a lot of uh, flashcards. Flashcards. So, That's uh, another app that you have been talking yes, about. Yes, it's, it's okay. called Flashcard Hero. So, it integrates between your laptop and your mobile. Mm -hmm. So uh, for uh, like phase one current affairs, which are usually one word and require a lot of note taking. So instead of noting it on a like a note taking app, one note or ever note, mm -hmm. I would directly make a note of them on my flashcards. Like this is the question, this is the answer. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was studying on my laptop mm -hmm. and um, it's on your phone then it's like, through cloud it sings to your phone so while walking or if i was waiting for anyone or anything i would do a set of 20 it takes barely five minutes mm. and then you feel like you've achieved something mm. and if you're like a restless person like me you can just you know walk outside and see your notes and just keep doing it mm. so it just keeps you calm also like you know mm. you're getting things done so, yeah. there's another important question that comes to my mind here the thing is that when you start your day with, let's say, general awareness or current affairs of any kind and you spend one hour on it, okay, a lot of students, the problem that they face, which they don't even realize it, uh, realize is that after one hour, they feel that they've achieved a lot mm. when, when they actually have not achieved enough for that day. And then they, because they're content with what they've done, what they've done in the day, then they end up wasting the entire day thinking that they've already achieved whatever they had to. So did you not face that problem? Yes, sir. So this is where uh, tracking helps me mm -hmm. because I had noted that uh, morning I usually did things like quant and logical reasoning. So I kept a note that, all right, I'm covering quant. I'm doing time and distance today. It will mm -hmm. take seven days or eight days. I used to give myself ample time to do it. Mm -hmm. And I would, in those hours, I would 
plan that I would do these many videos, these many hours of videos or so. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I would just put a tick mark next to it because it made me feel better. So mm-hmm. that entire kind of tracking it and making sure that if I scheduled 30 minutes for time and distance and all, I would mm-hmm. make sure because this is the source I'm doing. It is only 30 minutes. It will not take more than that. Mm-hmm. So I ended up doing it also. And uh, like the entire tracker system helps in it because you're mm-hmm. already deciding this is what I'm going to do. This mm-hmm. is where I'll be at the end of the week. Mm. So if you're keeping track of it, then you don't get lost. And then mm. it gives you the sense of achievement also that, you know, small, small things that you're doing, you're picking it off. So the so, daily timetable that I have created recently, yes, I have shown it to you, that you share with the students. Is that very uh, close to the daily time tracking that you did? Yes, sir. so I actually got the idea from your uh, daily timetable routine only. Like mm. you mark things that uh, you are unsure of uh, in a different color code and all. It becomes like a fun thing to do also at the end of the day. But then I sort of uh, uh, customized it to what yes. would suit me. Mm. Because I am not a kind of person who can sit for hours on one thing and do it for mm. all together. I mm. just like breaking it down into like I pretty much did all the subjects in my eight hours, one hour for one, mm. one hour LR, one hour this. Mm. I know it's not like something that everybody would do. But to my mind, I was retaining more and I was revising more and I was happier when I was switching between things. Mm. So that's why I just customized it to what I did. But the idea was the same. Like you keep track, you revise this once, you revise this twice, stick to that source and just keep doing it multiple times. Mm-hmm. Let me take a, a, you know, let's take a step back and yes, let's sir. go back to your educational background yes, because sir. I think we've not discussed that. Mm-hmm. So please tell me a little bit and all the students listening to you a little bit about your educational background so that they know about it. So I did my Bachelor's of Commerce uh, from Delhi College of Arts and Commerce, Delhi University. I graduated in 2015. Uh, from there on, I got campus placement and I worked in Ernst & Young for three years, during which I did my CPA, Certified Public Accountant. Mm-hmm. And after that, in 2018, I quit my job and I prepared for the 2019 RBI attempt. Okay, and this was your first? Yes, sir, this was my first attempt. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, because we have interacted a little bit during the interview, before the interview, during mock interviews, yes, let me take you directly there because that's mm-hmm. where I got to know you and you understood, uh, you know, the way that I function. So what exactly was the learning from the mock interview and how was the actual real interview? Alexa, so the mock interview, I would say, actually helped me a lot. I cannot stress it enough because earlier I was in a completely uh, I was working functioning in a completely different direction I was doing what everybody else was doing like you know revising the phase two again and uh, I think that would not have been helpful for me having sat in the real interview so when Mm -hmm. I came here for the mock interview the questions that were asked to me were very specific to my bio data and I don't know why but I was not thinking in that direction Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of questions related to my educational qualification, CPA and my um, bachelor's degree and my work and what kind of work I did, which is what was asked when I came here for the interview. So that actually set me off in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And I had a good one odd month after uh, so you took my interview to prepare. So I then just uh, uh, prepared my questions based on my education qualification. So if I'm a CPA, then I prepared a bunch of questions for it. Mm-hmm. And I just kept practicing those. So that mm-hmm. gave me the confidence on that day. And a lot of questions were very similar to what mm-hmm. was asked here. I don't mm-hmm. know if I was lucky or something. Or it's How similar. many questions did you prepare? Uh, 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 like about a thousand, so. About a so, thousand. Uh, so I used my flashcard method again. So mm-hmm. I, I thought they'll see me first, what are questions they'll ask me. So mm-hmm. I went line by line, like based on where I was born, whether it was I'm Delhi related questions. Then I went specific into my CPA questions. Like, what would a layman see? Like, mm-hmm. if, if you are a CPA, what would they ask you? Mm-hmm. Like, what kind of auditing did you, or do you do? How do you start it? How do you plan it? And this sort of thinking wasn't there in me till the time I came here. Then I realized, all right, they are not inside my head. They will see, they based on a layman, they will, mm-hmm. not layman actually, they're very qualified. But they'll ask me basic questions related to my educational qualifications mm-hmm. and job. And that is what happened. It was all based on my educational qualifications and work experience. Mm-hmm. We're talking about flashcards. Can you show me the application yes, ones? Yes, so, uh, so this is the app that I used. Mm-hmm. So for every month, so you can uh, put around 1000 uh, flashcards in one. So you mm-hmm. just go to August and these are the questions that I've prepared. Mm-hmm. So while walking or anything, I would just go memorize mm-hmm. and it comes this way. So mm-hmm. it just helps in retention mode because you think about it and mm-hmm. you can mark it as easy, unsure, hard or whatever. It will mm-hmm. repeat again if you mark it hard mm-hmm. and you just do it and it just keeps going like this. 
So it's okay. like a fun thing to do. The next you? page is the answer. Yes, sir. So, so you create like your it. own questions. I created my own questions when I was sitting on the laptop. And then it's just my 80% of my syllabus is in flashcards this day. Mm-hmm. So it sticks to your head. So mm-hmm. this is an effective revision. Mm-hmm. And you can do it wherever you are. Mm-hmm. You're waiting for someone. And all. it comes in sets of 20. So it basically doesn't even take more than 10 minutes to do mm-hmm. it. Less than 10. Depends on the kind of question actually. And technically, so, I think you can do the entire preparation on this. Yes, right? so you can. You can. Because you can convert everything. But what happens is if you do it for... Um, it's not down, downloaded yet. Mm-hmm. So like a uh, big uh, for ESI phase two current affairs, mm-hmm. the, they are sort of lengthy and you need a lot of memory, a lot of data is there in it. Right. So for that, if you do it, it's a little difficult because phone text will not uh, mm-hmm. show you that much. I can show it to you when mm-hmm. it loads. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will take time because it's a heavy file. There's a limit to how much text you can put. Text you can put because obviously it's based on some amount of MBs it can take. Mm-hmm. Hmm. About 1000 MB, 1 GB it can take. Hmm. After that, it says don't do it because the file will become very cumbersome and it will hmm. keep loading. Like this. Hmm. <laughs> this is what I've done here. Hmm. I'll just show it to you. So, so for I think phase one in phase one GA and for interview, this must have helped you a lot. A lot, sir. And this this paper is mostly focusing on GA. Hmm. A lot of it is GA. So I think I've practically passed because of it. Hmm. So That's I will really give a lot of credit to this hmm. app. Hmm. So when you are preparing, uh, normally students face a lot of anxiety and uncertainty when they're in the middle of the prep. Like they've studied for two, three months and they feel that they're not going anywhere and they're not going to be able to clear the examination. So how did you overcome that anxiety and uncertainty? So anxiety and uncertainty still happens even if you, whatever I am saying, even if you do that, it's not that I didn't suffer with it. Mm. But having a routine, tracking your uh, progress are two things that I would say help you mitigate it to a, a large extent. Uh, I used to go and exercise every day also. I made it a point that sharpens your brain also and it helps uh, in controlling your anxiety. I followed my timetable to a T. I made sure. And one day in a week, I would not study at all. I'll just go out to my friends or anywhere. I Or I'll just sit at home and watch movies or something. Mm-hmm. But one day in a week, I didn't study. Mm-hmm. And all these factors just played a uh, very important role in managing my anxiety. So. Mm-hmm. You were also talking about outcome and process when yes, you were sir. discussing this. So it's very important to be focused on the process of the exam rather than the outcome because if you keep focusing on the outcome, the odds will just keep scaring you all the time. A million mm-hmm. people will be doing a million different things, some better than you, some worse than you, but you cannot keep following uh, that all the time because it is just going to give you a lot of stress which you don't need. Once mm-hmm. you've made your strategy, once you've planned, you've given it ample time, just stick to it and just believe in yourself that it will happen. Mm. Focus on the process. Enjoy studying whatever you're studying. And mm. it will work out for the best. Mm. Whatever it is, it will work out for the best. Mm-hmm. That's very important because a lot of us nowadays are focused too much on the end goal. That we forget about the yeah, entire yes. journey of life. Yes, so nobody is a perfect person. Those thoughts sometimes would come to me also. But it's mm. very important to get yourself back to the present and just... Stay in the moment and read what you're reading. Just make sure you're understanding that. Mm -hmm. And I used to use techniques like when I would get really anxious or uh, I had a lot of anxiety, I would just take a timer and set a 10 minute timer that all right, these 10 minutes I'll study. Uh, I'll worry later in the five minutes after that. So I would just take a timer, uh, set it for 10 minutes, study for those 10 minutes and then go out, take a walk or something. But I made sure when you're you're sitting on your table and chair and studying, just don't let random thoughts come to your mind. Focus on what's in front of you. If you can't focus, just take a walk, go somewhere, do something. So we've talked about the strengths and weaknesses part in the starting of this discussion. Uh, English descriptive seems to me is one area which a lot of people feel that it's a strength for them or they even ignore it and then they figure out that no it was a weakness mm-hmm. how did you overcome uh, you know the preparation of english descriptive sir i did not take it lightly at all because uh, i was not very confident about my esi prep um, mm-hmm. I, they gave a lot of uh, random questions which nobody can guess no matter how much you study and revise so I made sure I did English right. I did not take it lightly at all. Mm-hmm. I um, showed my answer papers to a couple of people and whatever they told me, I took their advice and I redid it to make sure that I'm getting it right. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very important to focus on English. It's like less amount of effort and so many marks. It's 100 marks at the end of the day. You cannot ignore it. And I mm-hmm. did not ignore it. So what are the key points? Writing. Did you follow writing a lot? 
uh yes sir so taking things and writing it in your own words helps in retention in any way so mm-hmm. for long form things if you're reading a vision ias or anything it's just better to write it in your own words on evernote or make a summary it will help you in english also and in general retention it will help you a lot mm-hmm. sticking to word limits making mm-hmm. simple easy sentences you don't have to be fancy mm-hmm. and of course have enough time to check your paper uh, mm-hmm. so that you know there should be no spelling errors you don't want to lose marks on Mm-hmm. easy things like that mm-hmm. so i made sure that you know i'm typing right and i i'm mentally prepared that the keyboard might not be right that mm-hmm. day that it, it would take a lot of pressure to press the keys and all so i shouldn't mm-hmm. get frazzled so i was mentally prepared for all those things mm-hmm. and i just made sure that you know i'm checking everything that i'm writing i'm very particular about that and finishing my paper simple easy sentences mm-hmm. that's that's mm-hmm. a strategy i followed sir mm-hmm. it seems that you were uh, uh, something that we started with very focused on strategizing and planning so what do you think what kind of skills does a person need uh, when he starting with the preparation of government examinations like this or do you need to be very smart in order to crack these exams you no know, so i think it's all about skills and these skills can be built i don't think i had them before but it's patience it's uh, analysis of yourself an honest analysis of yourself like what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses mm-hmm. like for me like in prelims i knew quant is not my strength and i did not expect to get more than the bare minimum marks and i mm-hmm. i didn't stress uh, about it that much myself like if i was qualifying and i getting 10 i was getting 10 marks or so i was uh, i was okay with it that all right is not my strength my strengths were in ga and english and i focused a lot and lr i was average so i just knew what i could do and what i could not do similarly in phase 2 i stressed a lot on english mm-hmm. like people can be um, complacent about it but i wasn't i had a fear of it so that made me just be very particular about you know getting everything right mm-hmm. because i knew that yes i might not go my way and i don't think it did mm-hmm. and then finance and management i knew it's something these are my subjects and mm-hmm. i was like i made sure i revised it a million times because everybody told me these are easy marks mm-hmm. like if you get it matlab if you know it you get it right and a lot of it is in static portion not like uh, something not that's correct. you know a wild card like esi mm-hmm. so that's why i focused a lot on finance and management and simultaneously while doing everything from the beginning i had interview in my mind that's why i did my diploma in banking and finance earlier only because i knew they would ask me this question whenever i i would read anything uh, for esi and vision is or anything they give a proper conclusion and everything so i'd make it a point in my mind that you know when somebody asks me a keyword this thing i frame it in my head in such a way that you know it could be asked that day mm-hmm. so i should be prepared for everything so it's not like a last minute thing i was just constantly in my mind i was conscious that you know it mm-hmm. could happen so just prepare for it when it happens okay okay Okay, my last question to you, uh, and probably the most important: Who do you think are the support systems in your life that have honestly helped you, uh, not only in your entire journey, but specifically during this examination? So that would be uh, definitely my parents. Like they instilled a uh, discipline in me while I was studying, and they were. It's a very loving and caring atmosphere, and I'm very grateful for that at my home. They never once made me feel that you're doing something wrong or you shouldn't gamble on your life or something like that. They were always very supportive, and you do break down in the middle of an exam with a lot of anxiety attacks that happen. And I think without my parents, it would have been impossible for me to do it. Mm-hmm. The discipline and the love and the care that I got in my house, which mm-hmm. I'm very very grateful for, is the reason I've cleared this exam. Mm, very nice to hear that. <laughs> So as a welcome gesture, I have some things, small set of some things that I thought uh, we will gift it to you. Uh, before giving it to you, let me explain <laughs> the importance of some of them. So this is a book called Ikki Gai. I read it very recently, and I really loved it. Uh, it's about the importance of purpose in life. So it creates a beautiful flowchart, and using this, you can try and understand how the purpose of life can be realized. and this is another book called atomic habits by james clear so in this book he reveals how small small habits can actually transform your life so these are the two uh, important books that have been very close to me I, so i thought i'll share it with you so this is for you thank you so much sir i'm very grateful <laughs> so this was all uh, for this particular session of discussion wherein we had uh, minal khania with us and i'm very sure you did take uh, a lot of productive points 
in order to improve your preparation in the coming uh, you know coming examination and i'm very sure this will help you in preparing better preparing smarter and clearing the examination faster